Welcome to Breakfast Church at Great Hill on Sunday, April 26, 2020. Daddy Bishop is providing our message today. Thanks. And we have some of our regular Breakfast Church team assisting in worship today. Al, Donna, Shelby, Betty, and Polly. You are responsible for your own breakfast for this morning's service, but we're looking forward to the time when we can share our meal together. And a big thank you to everyone working behind the scenes to get these videos organized and produced. You know who you are, so I won't embarrass Brenda, Conchetta, and Peter by mentioning them by name. At the end of the service, you'll see a few ways to make sure your donations continue to support worship and outreach here at Great Hill. If you have any questions about that, please email me or call me and I'll be happy to talk to you. I hope you have all taken time this past week for reflection and prayer in the midst of the chaos of this new way we are living. I hope you have been the light of Christ for someone, whether it was the inferno of a burning bush or the faint flicker of light that can into someone in need. Let us remember that God is love. The challenge to us is twofold. Where do you see Christ in your situation today? Please contemplate on that question today. Where do you see Christ in your situation today? Secondly, where can you bring Christ's love and light to others? That's our call to serve. As Christ followers, we are all called to do our part. We are Christ's hands and feet. Like Esther, we have been called for such a time as this. In the midst of this difficult and terrible time, we can all care for one another. We can be the Christ that others see in our actions. We can spread this love with phone calls and emails to others and countless small acts of kindness. As a community of faith, committed to sharing the love of Jesus Christ, I invite you to bring your hearts and minds into worship. Let's bring the light of Christ into our places of worship.
join me in our call to worship this morning. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. What can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? I will lift up my cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. O oh Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant, born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will, I will fulfill, fulfill my, my vows to the Lord in the, in the presence of all his people, in the house of the Lord, in the, in the heart of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. And now join me in our opening unison prayer. Everlasting Lord, thank you for the kindness of your love that you show to us every day in many, many ways. Help us to be as kind to other people as you are to us. We know that you are with us every hour of every day. Thank you for your love and all your blessings. Amen. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today is taken from Luke Chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. The Walk to Emmaus. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed, and word before God and all the people. And now our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was still alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. 
when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's scripture tells about the experience of Cleopas and his friend. They knew about the crucifixion. We don't know if they watched Christ's death, but they definitely heard the horrifying story. They knew that Christ's body was missing. They even heard about the woman who said angels told them Jesus was alive. 
the death of their friend Jesus, the one they had hoped would be the salvation of Israel, was overwhelming. They could feel nothing but despair. They were so deep in that sorrow and disappointment, they didn't recognize Jesus when he walked with them. I am not sure that Jesus' glorified body was so different from how his earthly body had appeared. I suspect his friends were so distressed they really weren't looking for Jesus to be with them. It was not until Christ broke the bread and blessed it that the two were able to recognize the one they had been missing. They didn't recognize him until they saw him in a familiar ritual and suddenly they realized who he was. That's a story from long ago. I suspect it is a story about ourselves as well. As we live through this present pandemic, it's natural to feel a sense of loss. We grieve with Spike and Debbie and Nicole in the loss of Matt to this horrible virus. We are concerned about friends and family and church members whose work brings them in contact with the virus. We feel our own personal losses a loss of freedom to come and go as we please. We no longer can see many of those we love. We may have lost our sense of safety. We may feel the loss of financial security, even a loss of confidence in the future. Be careful. We are apt to become like those two travelers on the road to Emmaus. We can be so absorbed in the sad news that we miss the really great news. They didn't see what was in front of them until they recognized the familiar ritual of Christ blessing the bread. Where can we see ourselves in this story? Hopefully these photographs of our church family will open your eyes and hearts to the love that lives here. I urge you to remember the familiar scenes of our family at Great Hill Church in worship and at work. Much has changed, but still we are fundamentally the same period people. Be encouraged and rejoice at the Christian love and dedication which goes beyond the sadness and tragedy of this pandemic. Christ is with us individually and collectively in this situation, just as he was with Cleopas and his friend on the road to Emmaus, even when they didn't recognize it. Christ used that time to teach his friends the meaning of the scriptures. As we walk this difficult path of the pandemic, we can learn much about ourselves and about Christ's love. If we open our eyes and hearts, we can see examples of Christian love all around us. We have church members working on the front lines of health care. We have church members who are managing the technology which enables us to be together while apart for the Sunday morning worship. We have church members who are meeting online for a regular prayer meeting. We see our people and others in the community stepping forward to help others. We have local people taking groceries to the food bank for those strapped by this pandemic. We see local people sawing masks for use by those in health care and any who need them. Folks are calling their neighbors and offering to rub errands. The local churches continue to provide meals for a homeless shelter, Spooner House. Folks in Seymour and Oxford are contributing to a fund to provide free meals for health care workers. It is an effort to support both the stressed health care workers and the local restaurants which are struggling to survive this enforced shutdown. We see that same sort of thing happening in Seymour. We see local fire departments, who normally show up for emergencies like fires and accidents, continuing to make those important efforts. In addition, they have a new mission, making special mini parades, if you will, for children who are disappointed they cannot have their anticipated birthday party. There are so many good news stories going on around us because of horrible problems brought on by this pandemic are bringing out the best in us. This awful virus has a disrupted daily life and taken far too many lives. It has brought stress, sorrow, and even fear to our community. Yet, we see neighbor helping neighbor, 
we see what Christian love and caring really mean. Christ says, when you do it for the least of these, you do it for me. When we help others cope with the problems these days, we do it for Christ. Christ promises that when two or more are gathered in his name, he is here with us. We are together, yet alone, using the internet. And Christ is with us right now, this very morning. Just as Christ is with us in the Great Hill Sanctuary, he is with us today in these moments at home. Let us be thankful for his presence with us and for this outpouring of help, sympathy, and caring going on around us. Let us remember that God is love. We see the love of Christ in all these things. The challenge to us is twofold. Where do you see Christ in your situation today? Please contemplate on that question today. Where do you see Christ in your situation today? Secondly, where can you bring Christ's love and light to others? That's our call to serve. As Christ's followers, we are all called to do our part. We are Christ's hands and feet. Like Esther, we have been called for such time as this. In the midst of this difficult and terrible time, we can all care for one another. We can be the Christ that others see in our actions. We can spread this love with phone calls and emails to others and countless small acts of kindness. I pray that each of us will find ways to feel peace and comfort and that we may each find ways to spread God's love to others near and far. May the Lord help us to be part of the healing of our land. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your loving care. This morning we pray for the, our world leaders. Give us, give wisdom and discernment to President Trump, members of Congress, Governor Lamont, and all local leaders as they confront world pandemic. We pray for all the world leaders that they may find ways to help people around the world. We pray for the United Methodist Church, including Bishop Bickerson, our District Superintendent Sylvester, and all Christian churches, may they guide their people well. We pray for our servicemen and women, especially uh, Caitlin Cabor. We give you thanks for the military's creating um, overflow hospitals in the area. We pray for the Schoolhouse and Seymour Oxford Food Bank as they struggle to meet increasing demands during the pandemic. We pray for all those out of work and for small businesses and the greater economic health of our nation. We pray that baby Vanessa be found and safely returned to their family. We pray for all those working in healthcare facilities, including Priscilla Altarelli's daughter, Christina, who is working in Griffin Hospital, Lisa Brown, who is working at St. V's Hospital, Sonny Lee at River Glen Nursing Home. We also pray for Colleen Bodick, niece of Rosemary Westhaven, a nurse at the New York Presbyterian Hospital ICU for coronavirus patients. We pray for wisdom, courage, and compassion for all doctors, nurses, volunteers serving in the medical field. We pray for those who need God's physical healing and strength. We pray for those with cancer. May they receive the care necessary for their struggle. May all those in the hospital receive your healing. We, pr we pray for the health and safety for all those who are working at essential services during this difficult time. We pray for those volunteers who are sewing masks and necessary equipment for others. We pray for Donald Palazzo, diagnosed with COVID-19, and Beverly Palazzo, parents of Donald Marcus. We pray for Michelle Calabrese's friend placed on a ventilator. We pray for our shut-ins, Shirley Green and Joan Ford. May they now, may they know they are in our prayers. 
We also pray for families, especially those with children who cannot understand why their lives have changed so much during this pandemic. Our condolences and prayers of comfort to the family of Matt Gross, Spike's son, who passed away last week. We pray comfort to all those who are giving, grieving, and for God's comfort, special care, guidance, and strength for Bill Kerhopper, grandson of Eleanor. We pray that we will be a source of support and encouragement to others. Remind us of the opportunities to call and email others. This week, we pray for our Great Hill families, Jamie, Paul, and Jonathan, and Andrew Richards, Annie Richter, Ed and Pam Roman, Charles and Karen, Elizabeth and Haley Rowland, Muriel Savetta. We ask in, this, in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. to those who are fear, fearful and hurting. Remember John Leslie's word, do all you can do, by all means you can, and all 
ways you can, in all the places you can, and at all the times you can. As Great Hill folks, do that. People will know that the church has left the building and Christ and his love for all is at work among us. Go in peace and joy. Amen. Everybody be safe and have a great week. Though the light of the candle may end, the light of Christ stays with us always.